Have you heard about radon gas? It's invisible and odorless and just waiting for a chance to cause trouble. Think of it like a silent guest you never invited, one who might leave you coughing up trouble down the line. You might be thinking that radon sounds scary, but is it really something that you need to worry about? Well, the answer is unfortunately yes. Mike Osset is the owner of Dakota Radon Mitigation, and he knows that this odorless, colorless gas can seep into buildings from the ground. In fact, the areas in dark red on this map over Mike's shoulder, including here in Kelloland, hold some of the highest levels of radon in the country, and long-term exposure can seriously increase your risk of lung cancer, even for non-smokers. Yet Mike says protecting yourself and your family from radon is easier than you might think. Thanks for being here, Mike. Hey, thanks for inviting me this afternoon, Mitchell and Ashley. Appreciate being here. So we just we kind of describe what radon is, colorless, odorless gas, and it can really have some pretty negative effects. But what are you really looking for when you look to test your house? How do you go about it? How do we know if we have a problem? Well, yes, as you said, it's, it's prevalent in this part of your listening and viewing audience, uh, the eastern Dakotas and Minnesota. So since it is an odorless, colorless gas, we want to test for it and we encourage homeowners along with the radon action month theme that is uh, January to encourage homeowners to check their houses. Well, mm -hmm. how do we do that? It's older. It's it, we can't see it or smell it or taste it. So there's testing equipment and devices that have been more affordable and available to the public. So the wheelhouse of my business is correcting homes that have already tested high radon and responding to people in homes that have already tested. But the here and now is to be on the testing promotion side to get people to realize that it is not unusual to have an elevated radon mm -hmm. gas level, which is long-term exposure, right. can be a lung cancer issue. Mm -hmm. So through testing, whether you buy online, the homeowner or the people interested can do that uh, for not a lot of money yeah. and to find out results of the data of radon levels, which is kind of ambiguous. We can go off into the weeds, but it's called, the uh, gas concentration would be picocuries per liter. So anything above four picocuries per liter is recommended to do further testing and then take action. And this We're comes just, from one of my favorite, Marie Curie. Mm -hmm. I, I was excited to get to bring her into the fold today. Sure, um, yeah. Marie so. Curie, tell us about her, <laughs> Madam Curie. Well, it sounds like you've, you've studied up on her and many others, and she would be a, an excellent study. Uh, Marie Sklodowska, and I don't mean to butcher the, the pronunciation of her maiden name, mm -hmm. Kiri, uh, was uh, Warsaw, Poland, mm -hmm. Polish born in the late 1860s, and was a prodigy. She was a pioneer in science in, in her years. And the oppression and the war torn countries from outside sources, education was even less available. Mm -hmm. And for women at that time, it was even more harsh. So she had to f go to France, which was the science epicenter and, and where universities were. So she went to Flan France and even went to under some alias names under male auspices to get cred. Yeah. And she developed that credibility and she won two Nobel Prizes uh, in physics and chemistry in the early 1900s. And her, she is the founding mother of radioactivity, the breakdown, the decay products, those things that pierce skin, um, and get to the lung tissue. And even later on between World War I and World War II, she developed mobile x-ray units for the war to, for soldiers in the field to detect shrapnel. So for any of you, yeah. not to go off into the weeds, but Marie <laughs> Curie, Sklodowska Curie would be an excellent study. That's how we're to here and now. I love testing. bringing that back. It's, it yeah. makes, I mean, it really makes me interested in radon, yeah. honestly. But let's totally. go to the map of where we're looking at high radon activity. Mm -hmm. um, sure. We already talked a little bit about how right in where we are in a lot of our viewing area, it, yes. it's at a pretty high risk. Yeah, so what we have is a map of um, in the red zone is there's three basic colors. I'm colorblind, but we're in the red zone area in your in your audience where that is homes would have the highest propensity to test for elevated radon. Mm -hmm. Again, don't be fearful, don't be surprised. It actually might be more the rule than the exception that your home could be elevated above the four picocuries per liter, which is a recommended point. Right. A lot of that is attributed to glaciers, the Wisconsin glaciers a few thousand years ago that pitted up the ground as radon comes from the ground and got 
capture the pockets and the soils of radon to get into the home. Got Let's it. Talk about some of the negative effects that radon has right. on your health for people thinking like, well, how big a deal is this if I have this elevated radon? Well, yes. I, again, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. and, and there is data you can get on each state's environmental website of, of zones and counties, even zip codes of typically 40 to 50 percent of homes might test high. It is a long-term cause. It is not something that would take you out overnight, like say a carbon monoxide. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it does attack. It can break the, the breakdown in the chemistry of radon. If is from radium, uranium, the the decay products can pierce the skin level and it attacks the lung tissue. I'm not going to try to get yeah. in the lane of a physician. Right. <laughs> People would get, figure that out right away. But <laughs> that's the data that we're on. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a lung issue, long term. Uh, ranked second behind first-hand cigarette smoke, according to the data. So how does radon get into your home? You, you mentioned the basement. Tell us specifically, how does it get in? Yeah, as the concentration is from the ground and the breakdown of the rock and soil, mm -hmm. is that there's different source strengths mm -hmm. in the ground that can penetrate in the home. So it's going to be more concentrated in the basements, but it will circulate through airflow through cracks in the foundation, which any in concrete, there's always going to be some degree of cracks or leaks or joints in the foundation or sump basin or drain tile. All those things that were in that image are ways that radon can pierce and get into the home and permeate. Are certain homes more prone to it? That's another good question. Technically, that is a factor, but that would be like second, third tier. Sure. It's really the source strength in the ground of the below the house. So source strength and then its ability to transport through the soil. So it it's, doesn't pick on any particular home. Brand new homes can be a, a targeted. Mm -hmm. the, the house across the street that is old and has poor insulation may not have high radon. Yeah. So uh, on grade homes with no basements may have high radon. So it's mm -hmm. just, it's very specific to your own property. But the test is really easy to do and we don't have a lot of time to go through them all, but we can add some information to the article on kelloland.com mm -hmm. about the variety of tests, but they're affordable, they're easy to get online and there's a variety of ways to do it just to get that accurate number. Yep, and I'm encouraging people to test. And in the last even five years, whether there's, you can test your home either by one-time use non-electronic devices, which are on the left of this table, and mail in from laboratory yeah. specimens that have the shipping. You can we'll uh, fill you, it out. We'll have you give us a description so we can add some information and pictures on there too yep. so people can make a good choice. But thank you thank for joining you so us. Much. Thank you. Your family safety and peace of mind is Dakota Radon Mitigation's top priority. After your radon test, they truly hope your results show low levels of radon exposure. However, if your levels are elevated and you decide to take corrective action, they're here to help with expert advice and free estimates on a mitigation system for your home. You can find out more and request a free risk assessment through their website, dakotaradonmitigation.com. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by Dakota Radon Mitigation, trusted by South Dakota families and real estate professionals since 2005. Dakota Radon Mitigation, their mission is to reduce your family's risk of lung cancer and provide the peace of mind that comes from a safer home.